Kobe Bryant is the most overrated NBA player of all time. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know how this sounds, but hear me out. First off, I want to say long live Kobe Bryant before this even starts, and I still think about how crazy it is his passing was even to this day. I was a sophomore in high school, and now I'm coming up on my sophomore year of college. Time truly goes by fast, and even though this video is about how overrated he was, he was still a very special person in a lot of our hearts. So rest in peace to him. Kobe Bryant was a national crew in high school. As a senior, he averaged 30.8 points, 12 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 4 steals, and 3.8 blocks. He goes on and he gets drafted by the Charlotte Hornets with the 13 picks and gets traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. From there on, he became an NBA Hall of Famer, undoubtedly one of the greatest players of all time, 5-time NBA champion, 18-time All-NBA, 2-time Final MVP, and 1 MVP. Surely these are great numbers and Hall of Fame worthy numbers, but he's barely a top 10 player of all time. There's a pattern I've noticed in NBA media. Players are saying that they look up to Kobe, and players are saying that he's as high as top three, which is blasphemy. When we look at the player Kobe was, we see an inefficient shot chucker. For his career, he shot an average of 44%. When we look at other top players of all time, they're usually the standard of efficiency, hovering around 50%. I'm not a guy who's usually huge on efficiency. I feel like it is an overrated stat, but when compared to the list of the dudes people try to put him in the category with, there's an obvious drop off. Even though Kobe Bryant was an athletic freak, he didn't have that physical opposing play style that we think of when we think of the other top players of all time. He took a lot of jump shots, especially later on in his career. He wasn't attacking the paint to the point where nobody could stop him. That also ties in with his efficiency. Next thing I want to touch on is that when we think of a top 10 guy of all time, there was an undisputed time for a long period of time where they were the best player in the league. Kobe was rarely that. Kobe has one MVP. I can't expect to put him with the likes of Braun, Kareem, and MJ with one MVP. That don't make sense. People say that those years Nash won MVP, he should have won it, but those Lakers teams were, they weren't as good as, they weren't, they were on the worst side. So it wouldn't make sense to give him the MVP. I feel like throughout the 2000s, the best player in the NBA was that first Shaq for those first couple of years, then the transition to Tim Duncan, then the transition to LeBron James. I think the MVP year Kobe had it, but outside of that, it wasn't him often. Next thing I want to bring up is his 12 defensive team selections. Now I think this is the worst accolade that represents Kobe Bryant. Not saying Kobe Bryant was a bad defender, but when you throw in the fact that he has 12 defensive teams, that's giving out the annotation that he was an elite defender, and that is not true at all. 12 defensive teams make it look like you were an all-time great defender, and he's not that. When we look at his defensive career statistics, they are good, but they aren't great. Now I know defensive stats are nowhere near as good as measuring a player's defense compared to measuring a player's offense, but it can help a little. But first off, Kobe wasn't blocking shots. Now I know that he's a guard, but as an athletic freak at 6'6", he just wasn't blocking shots. We just didn't see it. His career block percentage is 1%, which is not anything amazing. However, he did get steals. He had a 2.1 career steal percentage, which again isn't bad, but when we look at dudes that we know for being all-time great defensive guards, he finishes nowhere near them. For example, Michael Jordan was at 3.1%, Chris Paul was at 3.2%, and John Stockton was at 3.5%. So he's not even close to being all-timer when it comes to creating steals. Now we can look at his defensive rating. The defensive rating is how many baskets a player gives up per 100 possessions. He has a 105 career defensive rating. That did not even put him in the all-time top 250 for NBA players, but he has 12 all defensive team, which is asinine. He had a 50.7 defensive win share, which is good for 53rd all time. But we look at dudes that are not considered great defenders like Charles Barkley and Dirk Nowitzki. Both of these dudes had higher defensive win shares than Kobe Bryant. Like I said, defense is way more than that. So I'm going to bring up what Phil Jackson said in his book. In his book, The Last Season, A Team in Search of Its Soul. Jackson said Kobe's defense was faltered in many ways. He gambled too frequently and he didn't keep his feet on the ground. Now, of course, Kobe was a big wing, 6'6", athletic freak. So when he focused, when he sat down, he decided to get into his chair and really play defense. Of course, he could lock you up, you know. Guards would try and post him up. He's too big. Bigger guys were too slow for him. But, I mean, that's the criteria for a bunch of NBA players. If you told a super athletic freak, for example, if you tell Andrew Wiggins, hey, I want you to focus, lock in, and defend for one play. I'm talking about Minnesota Andrew Wiggins before he became the defender that he was today. If you tell him, hey, sit down, lock in, defend this guy, I can tell you he's going to do a good job. Another athletic freak I can think of, another Minnesota guy, Anthony Edwards. If you tell Anthony Edwards, hey, I want you to focus, lock in, use your body, use your physical tools to your advantage and play some really good defense on this guy, you're going to get it out of him. Defense is a mindset thing. 
And of course, we know Kobe for his mindset, but the defense just wasn't there. You know what I mean? The last thing I want to touch on is his team success. Kobe has five championships. Five championships is a lot of championships. You cannot argue with a lot of championships. But for three of them, he wasn't even the best player on his team. He was behind Shaquille O'Neal, a dude that I have over Kobe Bryant in the all-time list. After Shaq left, it took him a long time to try and find his way to the top again. And even though eventually he was able to do it, I still look at those first three and I heavily attribute them to Shaq because Shaq's dominance on the offensive and defensive end is near unlike anything we've ever seen before. He was a dominant force. Nobody was messing with Shaq. We've never seen anything like it before. I mean, we've seen Giannis, but Giannis has looked beatable. Joel Embiid, he's been contained. There was no containing Shaq. He was on another level back then. The latitude that he got, I will give him credit for. A lot of credit, especially in 2009, because he really raised his play. You know, he was on another level in that 2009 run. But those five championships that I got, I just put a small little less value on them, especially when we look at the first three. The, the, the latter two have lots of value, but those first three, I take off a little bit of credibility for it. Just a little bit. Now, when I say that I feel like Kobe Bryant is overrated, I think it's done by the young basketball fans and a lot of the NBA players. A lot of young people think Kobe Bryant is a top five NBA player of all time. We hear the stories, we hear the Mamba mentality, we hear the work ethic, and they attribute that to a top kind of player, top five player of all time. But that's just not true. People that are 100%, I feel like consensus should be ahead of Kobe are people like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, LeBron James, Tim Duncan, and Shaquille O'Neal. These are people that 10 out of 10 times I'm putting above Kobe. People that I feel like deserve arguments are Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, Larry Bird, Hakeem Olajuwon, Oscar Robinson. These other people have legit arguments that I would have to do more research and look into to really make up my own opinion. Now, I do see why Kobe Bryant inspires and motivates a bunch of people. The stories around Kobe Bryant and his mentality and his work ethic are insane, out of this world, unlike anything I've ever seen. And it's actually inspiring. You know, you hear a story, you're like, wow. And he also has a very flattering play style. You know, a lot of people like the step back mid range, you know, the, the post up, the mid range post up, get to your spot. You know, that's a very fun play style to watch when it's on. You know, it's inefficient, but when it's on, it's beautiful. So I see where the appeal comes from, where the aura comes from. And when it comes to aura, Kobe was probably up there with Michael Jordan. When we're talking about all time auras. I think Kobe and Jordan are on their own level when it comes to aura. When we're talking about pure success and ability to dominate an NBA basketball game or the longevity and for everything, Kobe Bryant just doesn't do it for me. Thank y'all so much for watching, man. Make sure you subscribe, like, turn on post notifications, do all that, man. We work and we grow in the community. And let me know what y'all think because I feel like that's a very hot take or it might not be very hot you know what i'm saying because I, I still feel the same way i still feel like if you actually know ball if you pay attention to the nba if you pay attention to basketball you'll agree with me but i feel like if you were a young kid or you grew up admiring him you're gonna think that he's top three which is just simply not true to me so let's create a discussion let me know what y'all think man thank y'all so much for watching subscribe if you want some more content i got new content coming out daily and uh thank y'all so much for watching man peace